Hey everybody, this is Abby from Realistic Kitchen and Gardens, and today I wanted to finally show you my tentative plans for um, the new property in Zanesville. One more thing about this garden plan is that this is based off of crop rotation. So you see this list over here, and I'm using this app that's just simply called the Garden Planner. Um, I get it through Territorial Seeds specifically. It's a paid for program. Um, I think it's something like $29 a year. Um, and you can get it for a free seven day trial. And it's so helpful because it focuses on um, companion plants and all that kind of thing. So things that benefit it, things that potatoes benefit, things that you know, the whole nine yards. It helps you a little bit with planning and planting and spacing and diseases and all that kind of thing. Um, so it's something really, really good if you are brand spanking new to it. It's a 23 acre property and this whole thing is just kind of a intention for both long-term and garden. So this is a rough template of the first four or five acres that's cleared. Um, so tentative idea for trees and blueberry bushes, strawberries, cranberries, fruit trees. We're not talking about that today. We're talking about specifically the garden. Um, so this is a rough size dimension for the house. I want to set up rain barrels. Um, this of course faces due north right up here. And um, there's a parking area right over here, so this isn't quite to scale uh, in placement of things, but it's giving you the idea. Due north, this is the very shady side, and this is the south side, full sun, full, full sun. So it works out really well. Um, so I have four of the raised beds and a few pots that I did have set up here in Worcester. Um, and... A few of these plants I don't have yet. I may not get this year. Um, some of them I already have and need to work out a good spot for them. But this is basically going to be um, my closest area. There's a back side door laundry room kind of thing right over here with some stairs. So these will be just very nearby and kind of critical um, like culinary herbs to me. No no true food crops. Um, lemon balm, which I'm bringing with me, oregano bringing with me, summer savory, I'll start from seed. I got some dwarf stuff from one of the vendors. Rosemary I'm bringing with me. At this point, going to go in a pot because I don't know where I want to put it otherwise. Chamomile in a pot because I don't want it to take over the entire world. Chocolate mint, which I had and did enjoy this year. Again, going in a pot so it doesn't take over the entire universe. Um, this is lemon verbena. It's one of those plants that is very lemony. I'm not super familiar with the plant. I don't know if I can grow it from seed, but I've seen it from different, like territorial seed sells it as a started plant, which is actually where I got this rosemary from. Um, I actually have three large thyme plants, so I'm only showing two here, and I may or may not put them in here. These um, beds are to scale. They're two foot by four foot oval garden beds. They're not square. I may eventually make a larger raised bed, um, like a big, large, rectangular, soil-filled thing, but right now we're doing temporary, movable type of thing up here. Um, let's say only two things I'm putting in here because both plants are so large and the thyme will continue to get bigger and I'm totally okay with a whole bed full of thyme. I use it a lot. Parsley, I need to start from seed. Dill, again from seed. Chives, um, I have plants that I'm moving. I think I have something like five plants now. Um, but a funny thing about this whole, gar this whole property is almost all of this grass, all this white area, is all grass from whatever the previous owners put in. There's chives intermixed through the whole whole thing. You walk from here to a back door down here and you smell like onions because there's so many chives. So I may not grow cultivated chives anymore. I may just use whatever's in the yard. Um, I am going to be growing quite a collection of different types of basil this year. So these are kind of the more 
novel ones. Um, lemon basil, which is kind of like a more tender, a little bit brighter flavor than lemon balm is. Um, cinnamon basil, which is supposed to be a little bit more spicy. And then lime basil, which very similar to lemon basil, nice and bright. Um, I want to get a white sage, like the, the fuzzy kind of white sage. Um, cilantro is a big culinary plant I use for a lot of different dishes. Um, so I'm going to be growing quite a bit of it. And to say I'm growing three plants is a farce. I'm going to be sprinkling it in that bed and letting it fill in. Um, Emerald Towers is a Genovese type basil that specifically grows upwards. I think it's something like three feet tall or something, but it's it's supposed to be just straight up rather than the branching bushy type that I have grown in the past. And then there's this random conglomeration of plants here that are herbs and things that I want to grow but don't have room for them. So I have them sitting here in limbo, not actually to be planted this year. So anyway, to the meat and potatoes of this entire thing, which I'm sure is why y'all are here. This is the big garden. So these are 60 feet long and I have 10 rows. Um, I showed you a video of this row getting dug in. I have just only broad forked it right now, but I haven't uh, incorporated the compost yet and I haven't um, rototilled it yet. So I need to do that still. Um, and these rows are going to look doubled up. So bear with me because the way I've done this garden plan right now is in the white spot is the row. If there's anything above it, that's the fall plan. And I have notes on the side and I'll zoom in and show you. So I'm going to transplant all my garlic. This is 202 garlic cloves that I have in now. And I arguably could fit in 244 in this white space of a row, but I'm transplanting this garlic on kind of a leap of faith because I need garlic, I have it planted, I have it bought already, so I'm gonna bring it with me and if it doesn't do as well to be in culinary use, then I'll have it for seed garlic for next year because I did buy um, five different varieties of hard neck garlic that's supposed to do well in my area. So we'll see how it goes. Um, this will be harvested roughly in July, early July. I think it har I harvested my garlic July 4th last year. Um, I will come back to this. My crop rotation goes kind of opposite what this list does, and this is a circle. It's a kind of like the circle of life. It's a circle of crop rotation. So this whole thing is planned based on, based on crop rotation because the sun is going, um, east to west every day. So it rises in the east, sets in the west, and there's southern exposure to everything. So obviously if something is taller, like the tomatoes are going to be taller um, than the peppers and taller than the potatoes, that kind of thing, it will cast shadow, but sometimes that's a benefit. Sometimes you want things to shadow others, and that's just part of the nitty-gritty of getting into gardening. Um, Ringmaster is a white onion that is ideal for cooking. Uh, white onions are not known to store well, so I'm not planning on them storing well. I have Patterson onions, which are a hybrid yellow onion that are supposed to be gold standard for storage. Uh, I think they store something like 10 to 12 months, something crazy like that. Um, both of these varieties I'm getting from them as starts from Dixondale Farms. They'll be delivered in mid-March. I've referenced them before. Um, so, there. Uh, this year, I am upping my green bean game. <laughs> um, so, I want to try doing dry beans this year. Uh, my husband wants me to try some kidney beans, uh, even though we don't use that many kidney beans. But um, a lot of beans that you buy, dry beans that you buy in the store, are seed quality. They're obviously eating quality, but they're also seed quality. So if you find a dry bean that you really, really like, you could plant it. But you need to be aware that there's both bush beans and pole beans. And if you're trying to grow them like this with no support, then they're just going to slop across the ground and make a huge mess. Um, but dry beans are, both of these are bush bean size, so they only get two, three feet tall at worst. 
Um, and for dry beans, you let them grow into pods and then you leave them on the plant until the plant dies because the, the bean pods and the bean seeds inside will dry along with the pod on the outside. Um, and then you harvest them kind of like a shelling pea. You pop them out of the pod. Um, two rows of roughly 30 feet, two 30 foot rows roughly of bush beans. I will plant the north side first and then I'll do a succession row after of when these are kind of more towards spent um, so that these will still have the height of the sun as this other row comes up because this is on the south side. Um, and then these will be my spring cruciferous crops. We'll see how these do if I get them in soon enough. I'm actually going to try to bring my purple kale with me. I have the purple kale in the garden, but it got eaten down really bad by um, deer, so we'll see how it goes. Um, kale, I have bought three different varieties of uh, cauliflower. So I got clementine, which is a pale orange, uh, Vita Verde, which is a uh, light green, kind of like the same color as Romanesco, but it's not as pointy and uh, geometric as Romanesco, and then Denali, which is a white variety. I am trying um, Golden Chinese Cabbage from Baker Creek. Gurney's has a blue ribbon um, heading type broccoli that allegedly is only 55 days to get the head, so I'm going to try nine plants. I have so many different cabbages to try this year because I bought something like four or six different new varieties of smaller cabbages. It seems to be becoming more popular to grow personal size cabbages. So this spacing is for full size cabbages, but I'm not growing full size. So I may very well be able to get um, six in each spacing for that one. Um, um, so Imagine these here, because they didn't bother renaming them. Tender sweet, which is more oval shaped, so I thought that might be easier to cut. Primero, and the rest, all of these are around three pound heads when they're fully grown. Primero, which is red. Uh, Faroa, not sure. Um, a small green. Amaro, which is supposed to be very similar to Primero. And then Pixie Baby is actually a variety from Renee's Seeds that's supposed to be good and small. Um, but these are the fall cruciferous, so I'll go back to those in a minute. But those are some potential varieties to go in there. Um, leeks are going to be my companions to uh, peppers to have some uh, pest protection from them. Um, I'm going all in with peppers this year because I did, didn't get barely any peppers last year, bell peppers. So I'm doing King of the North, which uh, mature to be red. And then I'm going to do Gold Cal Wonder, which mature to be yellow, just for a little variety. Um, and then of course I'll have uh, basil intermixed and chives, in, or not over here because the leeks, but chives intermixed and marigolds and all those things. I didn't want to clog up the view of it with all the companions, but um, you'll see that when we get closer to the time. Um, I'm going to grow one plant of early jalapeno peppers. Um, I'm going to try full moon and Vesuvius Thai chilies again, which I grew successfully last year until they got hit by a frost because I planted too early. So that's my fault. And I'm going to grow two plants of sweet banana peppers because I really enjoy doing um, pickled banana pepper rings. Sweet. And then my tomatoes. I'm doing four varieties, three of which are going to be paste type. So I have Roma, which is supposed to be a determinate variety from Mary's Heirloom Seeds. I'm growing one plant of Bartelli cherry tomatoes. They're supposed to have these huge long bunches of uh, cherry tomatoes. My husband loves eating cherry tomatoes, so he can have that plant all to himself. Um, Cours de Boue is supposed to be a large kind of heart-shaped. These are both ox heart, Hungarian heart 
and Cordibu are both supposed to be ox heart type, but the Cordibu is supposed to be average of one pound fruits. Both of these are indeterminate also. Um, and Hungarian hearts are supposed to be average like half pound. I may actually put these recipes on the east side. But anyway, I'm doing um, Sangro, which is a early variety of red waxy potato, which I prefer for potato salad. So these will be harvested the earliest in the season. Then I'm doing Vivaldi, which is a new variety. All of these are new varieties to me, um, all these potatoes. But Vivaldi is a mm, early to mid-season gold potato. These will mostly be for canning, unless I get a really crappy crop on these. Um, and then I'm trying a new variety of russet potato, which is supposed to be a little bit earlier than the Rocky Mountain that I did last year, which I harvested, I believe, in August. Um, orange jing okra I attempted to grow last year, but I could not get them up past a sprout. I don't know if I had some kind of microbial issue in the soil or if the I was trying to grow it in a raised bed, if the bed stayed too dry or what was happening there. But I'm trying them in ground this year. These are extremely large plants and they're actually in the hibiscus family. So they flower and the flower looks like a hibiscus. And then once they're pollinated, they close up to the pod that you eat with okra. So they're a pretty plant, but they're quite large. Um, I'm going to do um, only nine, eight or nine, six to nine, uh, celeriacs this year, celery root. Um, I didn't store them properly last year, which was my fault. Um, so I had to buy some, but I still haven't quite decided on how many celeriacs I'm going to grow. I have this bamboo bean trellis because I'm going to be doing sweet peas as a companion. Um, they are not an edible variety of pea like I did this year. They are sincerely a pretty thing and they're very fragrant and smell good but they're still in the pea family so they'll still give the um, nutritional benefit I guess I could say to the celeriac. I'm also going to grow stock celery this year. I have seeds from a couple years ago for Utah tall celery. Um, I've been having celery as a snack more so might as well and it freezes really well to use in soups and things. Um, and then these are my spring carrots. Carrots are technically a cold season crop, so you want to grow them either in the spring or in the fall. And most varieties of carrots are in the 50 to 70 to 80 day range. Um, I'm probably going to grow the Nantes Bolero, which had the little purple tops. Um, I'm going to go two rows of them, and in between I'm going to have uh, conserver shallots, which are more of a teardrop-shaped smaller shallot than Figaro was um, because I, I love shallots and they store really well. So um, I'm going to be doing 30 feet of each of these technically triple planted. So two rows of carrots and one row of shallots down the middle for pest protection and to utilize space. Um, I should get 91 from each row. Um, spineless Beauty uh, Zucchini I do like zucchini. I'm going to try growing three of these. They're smaller plants, bush variety. It's a zucchini. They don't, they're fine. Um, this year I'm going hardcore with cucumbers because I didn't get, I think I got two cucumbers last year. Um, Summer Dance is a long slicer type. Uh, Max Pack Pickling is a pickling variety, and then Regal Pickling I'm going to do. And these will actually be trellised. I forgot to mention these tomatoes, because they're so large, they will be trellised so they can lean on it. Um, I have cattle panel that I may do horizontally this year instead of in an archway like I did last year. The archway worked okay for really, really tall things, but I don't want to buy more cattle panel, so I may try it horizontally, and I'll show you when we get there. Um, and I'm going to try growing tomatillos this year. Um, last year, I year before last, sorry. I bought some tomatillos from my farmer friend in Worcester and I made a bunch of salsa there day, which my husband and I really liked. So tomatillos look kind of like ground cherries or like they look like a fruit. They do look like this picture. So it's a fruit and then it has a husk over it. 
And when tomatillos are ready, the husk will break open and you'll see the fruit. And with the purple, the fruit will start to color purple as it gets sun exposure. Um, these things are known to grow extremely vigorously. So I'm only growing two plants and um, I may actually put some plastic sheeting underneath it so it doesn't volunteer for the rest of my life. Um, moving on. Now before we talk about these gourds, I'm going to just address this little teeny strip back here. This is Champion of England, which is a shelling pea variety, and they get uh, 8 to 10 feet tall. Um, they also unfortunately have a 100 day um, seed to harvest. So basically as soon as I get that row put in, I'm going to put these in because I can allegedly plant them as early as yesterday on the 11th when I'm recording this. Climbing honey nut squash are little squashes, only about yay big. They're like a little miniature butternut. Um, and I finally found seeds for them to vine because I like my gourds going up a trellis uh, rather than sprawl across the ground. I found some seeds from Renee's Seeds. Um, so two of those plants, a night shift acorn squash, which is supposed to be an extremely good variety for long-term storage. We all know acorn squashes. They look like a giant acorn with the ribs on them. Um, these are extremely dark green when they're ripe. Um, and again, they're just really good storage variety. Um, sweet nut acorn squash is like Night Shift, it's a decent storage variety, but the reason I got it is because it does the pepitas. It does the hullless pumpkin seeds. So I thought this was really neat. I can't remember if this is a true vining variety or not. I'm gonna have to look at it, but I mainly got it because of the pepitas. Um, and Lady Godiva is, I can't remember if it's technically a pumpkin or a winter squash. Sometimes you can't even tell the difference in them. Um, but it is a pepita variety also. Last year I tried Kai Kai and Naked Bear. Naked Bear was too susceptible to disease, so that one died off very quickly. Um, Kai Kai did pretty well, but I only got two fruits, so I'm going to try two. My husband really wanted watermelon this year, so I'm going to grow five plants of the Cal Sweet Bush uh, watermelon. I will not trellis this, I'll let it grow. Um, and these produce only two to three fruits, two to three, three to five, something like that, fruits per vine, uh, per plant, so got to deal with that. Um, I finally made enough room for lettuce, and then last is two rows of parsnips. Uh, this is 30 feet in the, this is for fall, so this row will stay open until May, June, June, July when I plant these, because otherwise I won't have anywhere to put them. <laughs> Um, so I'm doing two different varieties of parsnip. Um, warrior parsnip is a pelleted parsnip, and then hollow crown parsnip is not pelleted, but it's, I want the parsnips that don't have the long, gangly, hairy looking tip on them. I want them to just end on a snub nose. Um, and then fall carrots, this will be 30 feet, but I'll have four rows. So kind of like this row where I have three, this row will have four across. And I believe I did this very similar this past fall. Um, and then addressing the winter garden um, or fall winter in October, I will plant all of my garlic in this row. Again, 60 feet with two plants side by side, kind of like I did this year, will give me 244 garlics. That may be enough for a year, we'll find out. Um, in August, I will direct sow some spinach. I put in hmm, 20 plants. We'll see how it goes. I'm not doing Swiss chard this year because it's not cold hardy, so why bother? Um, and then the last one is, well, there's two more rows. So there's two rows of fall cruciferous um, slash overwintering. So um, I did technically buy three varieties of... Uh, Brussels sprouts, but I decided to just try two this year because I'm trying so many new things with like all the all the um, Chinese cabbages and all the cauliflower, all that. So Jade is supposed to be an AS, um, AAS winner, 
as well as Hestia. Both of these are green Brussels sprouts, supposed to be really easy. They don't lodge, which means fall over. Um, they're supposed to be really good. We'll see how it goes. I believe those are started in May and then transplanted in June or July. So depends when these onions come out. These will go in after the onions come out and garlic. Um, more purple moon kale, and I'm trying a new variety called winter boar, which looks very similar to purple moon. It's the curly, um, but it's not purple. It's green. Um, supposed to be very cold hardy. We talked about the cabbages already. We'll see how these ones do, and I may try all of them again just to see if one does better in the fall than the spring. Um, and same thing with all the cabbages. My husband and I loved cauliflower this year. Uh, so we're going to do two crops of cauliflower. I addressed Hestia, and then um, I really like sugar snow peas. Um, Oregon sugar snow peas, they're really flat. They have no major pod. You just eat, or no major pea in them. You just eat them for the pod. I'm going to grow the purple sprouting broccoli again. I absolutely loved it, and rereading re the variety details, I actually found out that they are hardy down to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. So that makes sense. I really liked it. I got a good crop out of them. Um, and then here is a second crop for the fall of the blue ribbon broccoli. Um, I also wanted to show you, because y'all are going to wonder what this giant window pane is. Um, I follow a homesteader who shared that she grows all the onions she needs in a year. And uh, she said that she plans on two onions per day. Um, so I basically wanted to look at what that actually looked like. So for me, that would be a hundred onions across and seven rows of it. So just a reference. So if you like this kind of stuff, please like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure to follow along my Facebook page, Realistic Kitchen and Gardens, for the majority of the chaos. Thanks. Bye.